Welcome back to the stream. Hello, Light. Hello, Gomas. All right, so today we're going to be continuing work on this living ossuary boss that I am working on. Hello, Crystal. Welcome back. I did see your comments, Light, by the way. 
They're very helpful. Thank you. Soundsy the dev, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. Good afternoon to everyone, or good evening, or whatever. All right, so let's see. So what I've got going on here is I'm creating this boss called the Living Ossuary, and this boss is essentially just an orb that has a bunch of bones orbiting it. And the interesting thing about this boss is that it does not, I decided that it's not going to take damage directly from the player. What it does is it spawns skeletons. And these skeletons um, are the things that damage the boss's health. So they have a, they have like a health connection to it. So basically the boss is just going to be like this mobile wave spawning sort of thing. But the boss is also going to be shooting bullets from itself as well. So the boss is going to be able to damage the player. The player cannot damage the boss directly, has to fight the skeletons. So I'm hoping that'll be kind of interesting to be like trying to worry about the skeletons who are also attacking you, but then the boss is like constantly just moving toward you. Uh, let's see if I can actually show you what this looks like here. If the project will start. And so I'm going to spawn this living ossuary. I need to get this, I need to probably uh, get my test room up and running. But so there's the ossuary, the living ossuary, and it hasn't spawned a skeleton yet. There it goes. So it spawned a couple of skeletons right here. And I can shoot the skeletons and you can see that the boss health bar at the top is going down. Now that's a little bit messy. I'm going to see, I think I can just use my test scene here. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just put the living ossuary in the test scene. Okay, yeah, this is much nicer. So this is the living ossuary shooting skeletrons. And for some reason, the skeletons aren't, their feet aren't moving. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, we'll figure that out. What's up with the lighting? It's a Godot 4 bug. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. These skeletons aren't like working for some reason. <laughs> uh, why aren't they not working? because it keeps erasing my settings. Why does it do that? Okay, now the skeleton should be moving properly and animating properly. Let's see. Nope, interesting. It keeps wanting to delete my, uh, the feet parameters. So I have a bunch of parameters here. It keeps wanting to delete them. I don't know why that's happening. Probably another Godot 4 bug. Oh, and Godot just crashed. Well. Well. This is a great start to the stream here. <laughs> Hello, Sagleaf. Hello, Dula. Welcome back. Good to see you. Okay, put all those back. Let's go back to my test scene. And let's see if this works. And actually, I might look in the project settings and see if there's any light related settings that might fix this annoying issue that I'm seeing. There we go. Now the skeletons are moving properly. I should spawn a rat and see if it moves correctly. Yeah, it does. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, with all of that out of the way... I think what I'm going to do is just commit this before it breaks again. I am using beta 10, yeah. Yeah, same thing as uh, last yesterday's stream. So continuing work on uh, this living ossuary boss. So I think today what we're going to do is we're going to give the skeletons an attack pattern. And I have an interesting... Um, modification I want to make to my bullet pattern definition component and then just figuring out you know what the right timings are and adding delays and maybe adding some more visual effects 
We'll see how much I can get done in about an hour and a half or so. That's about how long I'm going to go on the stream today, so let's get it done. Firstly, I'm going to go into my project settings and look for lighting settings. Light. I don't know if there's any 2D light settings in here. These are going to be 3D settings. Max renderable lights. I'm pretty sure this is probably... Oh, that's OpenGL anyway. I'm on Vulkan. Huh. Well, I'm just going to chalk that up to being a bug and then hope that it's fixed in the next beta. Actually, let's go to the Godot Engine website and just see really quick. Nope. No new betas. Okay. We'll have to deal with that. Hello, Shadow. Welcome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my skeleton and I'm going to give it some attack pattern here and also a movement pattern. So I have a vision of the skeletons like being really erratic. So what they're going to do is they're going to run to a random spot, like sprint to a random spot, stop, take aim at the player, shoot a bunch of bullets, and then run to a different spot and do the same thing. So it's kind of boring to just have them following the player. So they're going to run to a spot near the player, stop, take aim, and it's going to be going to be really cool, I think. So now how do we do that? I don't know how to code, so we're going to have to figure this out. So private void. Uh, let's see, state running state moving to moving to position yeah let's call it that so when we enter the state moving to position i'm gonna have it acquire the state so enter state moving to position let's acquire a state that's near the player so let's say target uh let's call it player position is equal to this dot get player nullable global position null coalescing operator to the global position. So what this line says in C sharp is basically get the player. If the player is not null, grab the global position. If this all does evaluate to null, then use the global position. So this is a nice single line way of avoiding null reference issues. So the player position is this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the direction from the player to the skeleton. So dir to skeleton from player. <laughs> and it's going to be again. So let's grab the player as a variable. Actually, that's we don't need that player position minus. Nope, got to do global position first. minus player position. So that's our direction. Let's normalize it. Dot normalized. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a random rotation. So we're going to say uh, var target dir <clears throat> um, Let's see. Team said they were taking a break for the holidays. Okay, yeah, I figured that was what's happening. It was weekly for a little bit, yeah. That was nice to get betas pretty regularly. Um, I was bummed when I missed the last one, but I saw this pop up. Well, welcome, Pi Jacqueline. Good to have you at the stream. Sorry you missed the last one. No need to apologize. Um, the VODs are always up. I know you don't get the live interaction aspect, but... Um, you know, you can always you can always see what I was up to if you want on the VOD. Dr. Toucan! How are we doing today? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Marcos, I don't know what you said, but there's a bunch of positive emojis, so... Welcome to the stream. <laughs> so, our target direction, we're gonna take this dir skeleton, dir to skeleton from player and this should actually be called 
Dirt to self from player. Um, dirt to self from player dot rotated degrees, math util dot rng dot randf range, negative 45, 245. So we're gonna do a 90 degree sort of cone in which maybe I should get out my paint so this is easier to show to everyone. So here, so here we've got the player, right? And here we've got the skeleton. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm calculating the direction to the skeleton, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm rotating it in a cone that is sort of like a 90 degree cone. So something like that, right? <clears throat> and so basically what the skeleton is going to do is it's going to now have a direction that's anywhere in this range here. And then um, what I'm going to do is just apply a random scale to it. So what I might end up with is I might end up with a position over here, right? Or I might end up with a position over here. And that's going to be the position that the skeleton runs to. The reason I'm keeping it bounded in this direction away from the player is because since the skeleton is going to be running to one of these points, it would be kind of awkward for the skeleton to just run past the player and go to a point behind the player, right? So that's that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. <clears throat> and so what's the uh, what's the distance we're going to apply? Let's create private const float um, min distance, let's say 50, private const float max distance equals 125. So when we enter that state, now we're going to say, okay, var target position is equal to um, player position plus target direction times, we're going to get a random range here. min distance and max distance. And that's going to be our target position. And I'm going to need to store that as a variable. So I'm going to say private vector to what is this state called? Um, move target position. And we'll actually set that down here. Move target position. Okay, now in our state moving to position, actually this should probably just be, I should probably just put this in the state normal, whatever. I will deal with that later. It means cool game. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Marcos. Watching your last live stream on my computer while I watch this on my phone. Wow, that's, that is an overload of me. I don't even know if I could deal with that much of me. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you like the, the streams. Trying to Google up the weird light issues might be related to sub viewports. I am not using any sub viewports. I think it's related to, well, number one, it happens when I spawn a lot of lights at the same time. So if I spawn 20 bullets at once, for instance, all of those bullets have lights. And then it obviously happens in that case. Um, but I'm also using canvas groups, and there's a number of issues related to canvas groups, so perhaps it's related to that as well, but who knows. Sound like you absorb all the information. <laughs> uh, let's see. Having the viewport pixelation for particles, but using 2D upscaling. Oh yeah, yeah, good idea. Hey, Smog, welcome back. So, what am I doing? I need to take this pathfind component, set target position to that move target position. Actually, I don't even know if I need to store this. I don't think I do. I can just pass that into the pathfind component there. And 
I want to call force set target position. So I have this method called set target position, which I can call every frame because I have this blocked behind an interval timer. And this interval timer just basically says, how often can you actually set the pathfind target? Because when you set the target location, it clears the current navigation path, which means it regenerates another one. But if my target position hasn't changed, then there's no reason to regenerate the path. So there's more sophisticated ways to handle that. But what I did is I just have a, an interval timer that runs at like uh, a fifth of a second, so 0.2 seconds. And you can only call set target position when that timer is stopped. But I also have this force set, which will just ignore that check. So, um, and actually, I'm just gonna call force set target position here because those are the same lines of code. Okay. So setting the target position, if, now how do I, I need to be able to see if this is finished. Navigation agent 2D. So navigation agent 2D dot is finished. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to rename this. So we're getting rid of this state normal. We're going to rename these two state normal and enter state normal. There is going to be no situation under which this skeleton um, over under which this skeleton, uh, what you call it, follows the player. Jeez. Okay, so then we're gonna have another state called private void state attacking. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this dot get tree dot create timer. Uh, let's just say, let's just give it a one second delay so I can observe it and then connect uh, scene tree timer signal name timeout callable dot from now the thing about these lambdas that i'm not so sure about is yeah i might want to hmm I'm trying to decide if I want to use a timer, like a node based timer or a scene tree timer in here. Let's just do it for now. But for the purposes of being expedient, I'm just going to do that. Okay, so state attacking. We got to add these states. So I've got those states configured. Perfect. All right. Hello, I don't know how to say your name. It's in Russian, but welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Where do you get tutorials for C Sharp? Um, I do not know. Um, reading the official documentation is, is good enough. They typically provide, well, I think they always provide an example of how to do the things in GDScript and C Sharp. It's basically one for one. It's it's exactly as if you translated GD script to C sharp. Like it's all the APIs are called the same. It's it's the same concept, really. It's just the language that you're writing in is different. There are a couple of little tricks and edge cases, but you will find those out when you start using it. Um, but yeah, it's it's super super straightforward, I think. Yeah, Light is exactly right about this. Derpiest dude, I don't know, Mongus. Am I being memed right now? What keyboard do I have? I have, what is this called? This is a Leopold. It's a Leopold with brown switches, I believe. And it is a 60% keyboard. <laughs> uh, 
I'm making a skeleton enemy, yes sir. You're in a race to copy and release. Uh, are gonna copy my game and release it before me? Hey, more power to you if you can. This is uh, not easy. Why do you use skeletons for characters? What kind of question is that? What kind of question is that? Does anyone want to tell him why? It's because, very simple, skeletons are cool. That's it. That's the whole story. If a game doesn't have skeletons, I'm not interested. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Only thing I found that's similar to what you have about lights is from 2017. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure it will be, um, I'm sure it will be addressed. And if it's not, then I will, I'll report an issue. I, I should report an issue regardless if there's no, if there's no results, but that means that I have to create a minimal reproduction project, which can take hours. Sometimes the last issue I reported to GitHub literally took me like two hours to prepare the minimum reproduction project. And it's like, I can't be doing that every time I find an issue, you know? There's one pixel artist on Twitter that only posts skeletons. Ooh, do you know the account name? I would love to follow that because I can't draw skeletons to save my life. Okay, so if all went well, I think this is good. So the skeleton should, we should see it run to a position and then stop for a second and then run to another position and then stop for a second. So let's let's see if that works. I just started learning Godot. Is it worth to learn C sharp or learn G script, GD script? Um, I would stick with GD script. I mean, I think if you're learning Godot, there's no reason to make it any more complicated. Um, I think Learning Godot is the most important part. You can always switch to C-sharp later if uh, if you want to try it out. But I would just stick with, you know, what's built in Godot and all of the tutorials basically are done with GDScript as well. So, and once you learn GDScript, I mean, I don't know if you have a programming background, but once you learn a programming language, like the rest of them are pretty straightforward to get your head around. Um, for the most part. So is this not working? We'll print a uh, huh right there and see what happens. Nine volt wise man. Okay, I'll check that out. Okay, so we're not seeing any print output prints. Does it not like this form here? Create timer. Connect. Scene tree timer signal name timeout. Hmm, that's not working. Does it not want a lambda expression in here? What happens if I do private void on attack timer timeout? If I do that, oops, and then is that going to work or am I doing something wrong? Oh, you know what? I don't think Hmm. why is this not working? I'm not seeing any prints. Am I doing something wrong here? Enter state attacking. Oh, 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 wait. Let's see if it even prints anything when I enter the attacking state. You are welcome. So these skeletons are not even entering the attacking state. And I don't know why that is. So they're in the state normal. Uh, perhaps. Uh, 
let's print the move target position that it that it comes up with and then also let's print the global position it's possible that well no <clears throat> we'll figure it out the streams only happen during school time so i have to sift through them in vid form yeah school is an unfortunate thing interesting Zero, zero is the global position here. So it thinks my global position is zero, zero, which means that this is... Right. Wait. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so the problem is that the ready method here is being called before I've repositioned it. So if I go to my living ossuary, it is spawning this entity spawner. This entity spawner is being created, added to the scene. It is adding the entity to the scene tree and then changing its global position. So all of this code in here is being run before it's being positioned, but I don't think that should matter. Oh, maybe it does matter. So this state, this enter state right here is being called before it gets positioned. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So, um, I wish there was an easier way to do this or a cleaner way, but what we're going to do is we're going to say callable.from. I keep, <laughs> this is the, uh, well, this is the format for hooks in React, and I keep wanting to put my dependency array after, but that's not right. So if I do this and then call deferred, I think maybe it'll start working. Skeletrons are still not working. Okay, well, the correct... Um, the correct position is being used, but they're not... Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It's been a long day already. Um, let's see. It's unfortunate. Oh, yeah, I read that one. Anyways, I sent you the Godot issue thread about the lights. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. On Twitter. With your horrible skeleton. Okay. All right. Thank you. What do you think are the main benefits to using Unity as opposed to another engine? Oh, using Godot as opposed to another engine like Unity? Uh, main benefits... Well, I think the main benefit is I just think Godot is the best 2D engine around, regardless of of the other engines. I think it's better than Game Maker. I think it's better than Construct. I think it's better than Unity for 2D specifically. Um, it has the, I think, the perfect balance between built-in functionality and power and extensibility. Like, there are very few things that I've tried to do in Godot that I haven't been able to do very easily. Um, so that's, that's sort of my opinion about it. Um, the fact that it's free and lightweight is really good for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I think, I don't know, it, Godot doesn't feel bloated. It doesn't feel, you know, it's got really good management. I like the fact that it's open source and I can report issues and I can see the progress on those issues being um, worked on. It's just, yeah, it's just... I, I like it for those reasons. And the node-based architecture is just, like, really, really cool and makes a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> Console support is a problem, yeah. Why do you use kinematic body 2D for your projectiles instead of handmade node for this? That is a good question. Most of it is just me being lazy. The character body... Well, in Godot 4, it's called a character body 2D. Um, it gives you a move and collide function. Right? Which basically allows me to handle collisions with terrain pretty easily, which I like. So I don't have to write my own, like, uh, terrain collision check logic. 
Uh, that's basically it. I mean, that's the reason why I'm, I'm just being lazy. I may redo it because I am using a shape cast for all of the bullets. And I may just switch to using a shape cast alone instead of a kinematic body. It's pretty confusing. I mean, I, I kind of implemented this in a messy way, but I'm like obsessed with making sure the collisions register perfectly all the time. And the easiest way to do that was to use a combination of kinematic body 2D and shape casting. But if it ends up being a problem in terms of performance, I'm going to have to figure out a different way. Probably have to use ray casts or something. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Crystal. Yeah, you don't you don't owe any money to anyone involved with the Godot development because it's MIT licensed. Over 144k errors. Wow. All right. So what am I doing? I don't remember. Oh yeah, the reason why this isn't working is because I'm being ridiculous, and um. Am I being ridiculous? Oh, yeah. Wow. 144,000 errors. I shouldn't have clicked that button, should I have? I don't think that's related to my game because nothing's running. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I think that's... Godot 4 still has a ton of issues, so I'm using tool scripts in a couple places. And it seems to be like sometimes when you build the game... It's not in the right state and it just prints infinity errors. Yeah, so if I switch. Okay, so I had to close. See, I closed all my scenes and now the errors are stopping. What is this? <laughs> what is this error? Yeah, it's related to the feet animation component. There's something, something broke in the tool script, but if I open this back up, now it's fine. Let's see? So it's not those errors that are causing the skeleton not to move, I don't think. See, I closed the game and the errors are still going. Wow, this is being ridiculous. Okay, I think I know what the issue is. Do I know what the issue is? I'm going to get rid of this force update here. There's a little trick. I, I think I actually... No, I didn't make a video on it, but there's a trick that I'm using here, which is to just export a Boolean, hard code it to false, and then give it a setter that allows you to call some functions. And that's basically the way that I make a button in the editor that will update my tool script. But... Apparently it's not working. So I'm going to get rid of that and see if that's the culprit. Thank goodness for version control, am I right? Yeah, see, so now it's working fine. And if I start the game... Goodbye, Sagleaf. Thank you for tuning in. So yeah, no errors now. Well, there's one error. Could not match member telegraph to any node. Well, that's unrelated, so I'm not going to worry about that. And the Skeletrons are still not working. And why is it? I don't know. I don't have debugging set up yet, I don't think. Maybe I do. Let's see if I can do it. So let's put a breakpoint there. Godot Mono is not supported. Install Godot Mono extension. Nope. I don't have debugging set up yet, so looks like we're going to go with a good old GD print. See how that goes. 
exported sets in Godot 4 are a little bugged and you need to reload the whole scene. That's unfortunate. Lots of bugs. I'm not seeing any, any output. What is going on? Oh. Yeah. I inadvertently deleted all the code that actually moves the player. So, or the skeleton rather. Yeah, so all of this code right here. Okay, well, that was an ID10T error. There we go. I, I deleted that whole block instead of just the part where it acquires the, uh, the player position. Okay, so I will, um, you know what? I think, I think I need to use a timer for the attack state here. And the reason is because I have a scene tree timer that's attached to the scene tree, right? At the root, basically. And it's, it's connecting this signal, right? Um, or this method. And I think... Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. I was going to say, I think if the skeleton gets freed before the timer runs out, then it's going to cause issues. But I actually don't think that's true. So I think I'm going to go ahead and keep the lambda function here. This is by far the best addition in Godot 4 for C Sharp. And actually, GDScript is the, the Lambda. Anonymous functions, whatever you want to call them. They have like four different names. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Glad I use an old version of my engine where everyone already banged their heads against about the feature. Yeah, that's true. Do I use some specific steering behavior for my enemies? I don't know. It's it's actually pretty basic. Um, so I have the velocity component, which is in charge of moving, moving the character bodies, and um, I call this uh, accelerate in direction. And I basically, it's kind of steering behavior, but I control the acceleration, and obviously. If you have a stronger acceleration, you're going to more rigidly adhere to the path that's generated. And if you have a lower acceleration, you're going to like slide and wander a little bit. Right. But I don't actually I didn't actually implement any like steering behaviors if they're going straight along the path. Um, and the reason is because there's. I don't think it would add a whole lot to the game because enemies die pretty quick. So what I do is I just I create more interesting wander patterns by just doing what I'm doing here, which is just like explicitly programming out how I want them to work. OK, so let's see if the skeleton works now. Okay, so the skeletons are not, they are not um, stopping for one second. So let's make this a lot easier. We're gonna get rid of this living ossuary. We're gonna put just a skeleton in the scene. That's gonna be easier to deal with. So the skeleton runs away, comes back. So he's not stopping, right? I programmed in here a wait time of a second and it's not working. And I think the reason is because it's detecting that the navigation is finished. I bet you it's detecting the navigation is finished. As soon as it enters this state, because the pathfind component doesn't yet have a path. I'm gonna need to figure out how to deal with that, but let's first conf uh, confirm that that's the issue. So change to attack. So if I see these two prints happen like immediately one after another, then that means that the path thinks it's finished even though it's calculating a new path, right? Yep, so you see here. Uh. 
there is a little bit of a delay. The other thing we can do is I can go to my Skeletron and where's my Pathfind component? I can put debug draw enabled on and we can actually see the path that it's drawing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so seeing that path immediately reveals the problem. And you might notice the problem is that the skeleton doesn't stop. Like there's no code to get him to, de to decelerate. So I need to do that in here by doing velocity component dot decelerate. Okay, that should fix it. This is why debug visuals are important. Okay, and the other problem is he's not aiming at the player. So when we're in the state normal, I'm going to say aim component. Do I call update? Where Where is, uh, how do I update this? Where's my aim component in my skeleton? Node to aim gun root. I need to set the target position, okay. So in our normal state, I'm gonna say aim component dot set target position. I'm gonna set the target position to Do I want to set it to the player? I want to set it to global position. Uh, assembled gun dot global position. Global position plus vector two dot right. And the reason I'm setting the aim component to aim there is because um, I want it to look like he's running in position and not aiming at the player. Okay, let's see if that works. How do you set up those debug visuals though? I'll give you a look in just a second. Okay, so that's not working at all. <laughs> What is it aiming at? And also he's stuck on a corner there. Did you see that? Okay, so I don't know what he's aiming at. He's being... Um, Yeah, I don't know. Welcome, Sagleaf. Good suggestion, Light, but yeah, everything's in global position, I'm pretty sure. Okay, Saravok. Uh, if that if I said that correctly. So the debug visuals, if I go to my Pathfind component, it's pretty simple. Um, if I have the debug draw enabled and I'm in an OS debug build, so that means that I'm building for debug, either from the editor or from the export menu, and I've explicitly enabled the debug draw, then what I do is I just loop through the current navigation path, which can be gotten like this, get current navigation path, and then you draw circles. Now, the thing that you have to realize though is that in the draw method here, um, everything is in local coordinates, and the path will be in global coordinates. So you have to use two local to convert the point to local coordinates, and then you can draw your circles, you can draw your lines. So it's basically just iterate over the path, convert all the points to local coordinates, and then draw a circle and lines connecting all the points. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to implement. Takes like two minutes and gives you a nice, nice tool. And if you use the component-based design like I'm doing, where you can have a reusable Pathfind component, you won't have to rewrite that debug logic all the time. He's instantly aiming where you should aim at at the end point of the patrol. Is that? Yeah, that's. I think that's intended behavior, but let's see. Let's, let's examine this a little bit more co closely. 
Yeah, so the thing I'm worried about is that... He should be constantly, like, keeping it horizontal, right? It shouldn't be flipping around while he's moving. It should aim to the player when he stops. So that's right. It's just when he's moving, I can make this look really apparent here. Who knew skeletons could be so difficult? So see how it's like, it looks like he's picking a spot and then staying aiming at that spot. But I'm calling set current position every single frame in state normal. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Aim component set target position, pathfind component follow path, Facing component update. That's all good. Hmm. No, there won't be a problem if I spawn rats. The rats, every scene is isolated to its own logic, so the living ossuary could spawn other living ossuaries and it would all just work. Do you want to see that? <laughs> uh, that might be a little bit too much of a detour, but let's try it. So actually, the way that it's technically working is the living ossuary spawns a spawner, which is then in charge of spawning the entity. So as long as the spawner works, which it does, it can spawn anything and it'll just work. Um, and because I'm using the component-based design, the living ossuary will actually have its health connected to the rats, too, if I do that. So, let's... Yeah, let me show you. So I can put a rat in there. And then when I spawn things... A uh, skeleton? Rat. Cool. So I'm going to make it spawn rats now. We can go in here. I'll spawn the living ossuary. And we we'll should see some rats start spawning. See, there's rat. And if I kill the rat, see, it damages the boss. Just the same as the skeletons would. It's all tricks. It's all, it's all consistent. So why is this not aiming correctly? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't get stuck on this for too long, but it does need to be fixed at some point. Set target position. Um, what happens if I just set global position plus vector 2 dot right? It could spawn players. Yeah, uh, yeah, if it spawned players, it wouldn't work. <laughs> um, why is it separate? Because they are not inheriting from the same base class. These, these entities are all composed of smaller components. They're not um, inherited from a base class. Oh, you know what? This might not even be an issue. It might just be a case of my aim component smoothing is not high enough or low enough. Set it to 100 smoothing and see what happens. Oops. Well, I guess I can just spawn a skeleton from here. Oh, I see. So it wants to aim down for some reason. Why does it want to aim down? See how he's putting his gun down though while he's running? Let's actually let's actually make his velocity component. I'm going to make him a little bit quicker like I actually want him to be and give him a higher acceleration coefficient. See how he like sprints and then stops? So that's kind of like 
you know, he's like tactical, like he's running into position, stopping, shooting, run, stop, shoot, run, stop, shoot. That's basically what I want to do. It's just he's being ridiculous, you know? So yeah, it's just that during that state where he's running to the position, the gun is not in the right position. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What is the problem? Set target position. Set target immediate. Hmm. Node to aim. Debug mode. I could turn on debug mode for this. And then we can see a little indicator of where he's actually aiming. Ossuary light source culling. I do not know what that means. Um, you know what? I think I figured out what the issue is. I don't think that I'm... I think I'm just not setting the aim position to a far enough away value. If I say vector 2.right times 32, is that going to work all of a sudden? Oh, look at that. Wow. Okay. So I just, it was working. I just didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't do it right. Once again, an error caused by myself. In my defense, I haven't implemented an entity that uses guns in a long time. Um, the past couple of enemies that I... Ooh, I show you this guy. Spawn skull. Look at this one. It's a floating skull. Look what it shoots. Flying bullets that loosely track you and wander. So there can be multiple skeletons. It also crashes the game, which is an issue that I reported. But... Uh, spawn skull. So look, if there's two of them, they're just gonna like cover the arena in these things that you have to dodge. So that's pretty cool. I like that enemy a lot. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're going to tackle the Udemy course. Really enjoyed your content here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any plan to update the content for GD4? Or should I just power on ahead now? Um, I don't have any immediate plans to update it. The problem is that I'd basically have to redo the entire course for Godot 4. So that's a lot of that's a lot of work to do. I probably should, though. It's just I don't have the time. I'm trying to figure out how to make time, but it's very difficult and I want to make more Udemy courses too, but it's just, again, basically the choice becomes this. I have three things that I, that I want to do and I can only choose two. I want to make YouTube videos. I want to make my game and I want to make Udemy courses. I only have the time to do two of those things. And really, if I chose to do Udemy courses, then I wouldn't be producing YouTube content. So if I chose to move ahead with courses, I would have to drop YouTube content creation and game development at least for a few weeks while I built another course. So that's the situation that I'm in. I would love to do it, but just need the time. Skull looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you could if you do the course in Godot 3, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for tuning into the stream, by the way. Um, if you do the course in Godot 3, it's going to be pretty easy to transfer that to Godot 4, I think. Not like migrate, but just like you'll have the knowledge of Godot already, and there's not that much new stuff to learn in Godot 4. There's not a whole lot that changes in terms of fundamental knowledge. There's GD script changes, but it's the same. Same concept. Just use instantiate. <laughs> Um, 
So yeah, I think this guy is working now. What I am going to do is I'm going to say... I'm going to put it down in a vector 2 dot down. I'm going to put it at like a 45 degree angle when he's running. And then it's going to look like he's being super tactical. So now the problem is that he's not flipping the right direction. So if I run this way, see, he doesn't flip to face me and he doesn't flip like he runs backwards to some locations, right? Which is not good. So I need to change that. And the way that I need to change it is I have this facing component here. Update. Vector 2. Target position. So maybe I can override this. Wait, move on use parameter. Oh, that's fine. Is that gonna work? Use compound assignment. Ah, very cool. Question mark, question mark equals assignment. So if this is null, assign it to this. Very interesting. I like that. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I call this update method, which changes like which direction entities face. But what I've added is the ability to pass in a target position that can be used to override all of this logic, essentially. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, what am I going to do? Oh, too many open. Let's just close to the right. Okay. So as I'm following the path, I'm going to get the, the target location if I can. So facing component update. Is there a way to get the target position from a navigation 2D? Let's see. get get final location okay so get final location i'll create a public vector to target location and then what we're going to do is we're going to say navigation agent 2d dot get final location Okay, and then in here, just like that. Okay, so now it, he should not be moonwalking backwards while he runs. I'm gonna also have to fix. So yeah, he's facing the right direction now. <laughs> but now the gun is wrong. So there's one other thing that I'm going to do. This facing component. Public bool is facing left. Actually, let's just do this. Public bool is facing left. Get private set. Okay, I think I got that logic right. So now that I have that, the what I need to do is I need to do times, oh boy. 
we'll just say facing mod equals facing component dot is facing left question mark negative one one i guess i don't need to do that dot normalized uh do i need to do uh hmm yeah vector two dot right <laughs> oh my gosh times facing mod this is ridiculous okay i think that'll work Okay, so now that's working. Cool. I think that's, uh, I think he's working pretty good now. The more there is, the less they start rendering. Uh, could I share? So wait, in 3D or 2D? So it's just, it stops rendering lights. I thought they could pretty much render an infinite number of lights in 2D. Is that wrong? Um, share the extensions that I'm using. Is there a way to change the number of lights that are used? So here's the extensions, uh, C sharp, C sharp extensions and then C sharp XML. I have a bunch of unrelated stuff for web development. And then the one Monokai theme, I think is the other one and the material icon theme. Those are the extensions. Yeah, there's a bunch of lighting weirdness. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, well, the skeleton pathfinding AI is better now. So I'm going to commit that so I don't lose it. So now there's a, a modification that I want to make. This is going to be kind of difficult, I think, but we're going to figure it out. So what I can do is I can add a bullet pattern com definition component. So firstly, let me... Um, add some logic to this skeleton here. I am going to use a, uh, a timer here. I'm going to call, I'm going to say uh, timer. We're going to call it pre attack timer. So there's our pre-attack timer. When I enter the state attacking, I'm going to say pre-attack timer dot start. I'm going to rename this to enter state pre-attack. State pre-attack. We're going to get rid of this. If pre-attack timer dot is stopped. We're going to state machine, change state, and we're going to change it to state attacking, which needs to be defined. We might want an enter state as well. So I'll just throw that method stub up in here. So during the state attacking, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, when I enter the state attack, I'm gonna say assembled gun dot fire. And then maybe I'll just change back to state normal. Okay, so I'm changing back to state normal. And I need to add my states here. Cool. So when I enter that state attacking, I'm going to fire the gun and then change back to state normal. 
So what I can do is I can create a bullet pattern definition component here. And you may have seen this in my video. If I do a path 2D, I can actually define a path for the bullets to follow. So if I do this, why is it curving? Don't curve. Actually, I should see if my, did my spider centaur maintain its paths? It did, okay. So let me just see. So we'll do like a zigzag pattern there. We'll say four or six bullets, maybe. Randomized rotation direction, no, okay. I don't know why that looks so weird. Is it because my bake interval is not high enough? I don't know. But in any case, so now watch what happens. That is not as extreme as I wanted it to be, but. Oh, and it also doesn't rotate. Yeah, this is this is going to be difficult, I think. This is going to be difficult. But I will make this more extreme so you can see this a little bit better. Oops, that's not right. Um, is there even enough bullets to show this pattern accurately? Let's see. Wow, that doesn't look like anything. Does the uh, spawn spider centaur, does this still work? Okay, yeah, so the spider centaur still works. He shoots like a, an X or a cross or something. I guess the skeleton's pattern is just not, there's not enough points or something. Hmm. But basically what I want to do is I want to take this pattern, but I want to make it shoot over time. So for instance, you know, shoot the bullet that's here first and then the bullet that's here first and then the bullet that's or next and then bullet here, then bullet here over a period of time. And so what he's going to do is like raise and lower his gun to create the pattern over time instead of creating them all at once. That's what I want to do. Might be very complicated. How do those patterns work? So basically there's this per bullet pattern definition component, which is not named correctly. Component. And it takes all of the path 2D children that it has. And it also asks for a bullet count and basically what it does is it says, okay, how many bullets do I need to put on each path? So if I have two paths and 10 bullets, I need to put five bullets on each path. And then it iterates through each path and then iterates through the, the baked length and sets a bullet on the appropriate intervals along that path. Now this component actually, it just returns a list of positions that are needed for the bullets. And then in my gun, I can say for each position, um, create a bullet, set some other settings related to like rotation and whatnot. And then I call this method offset all node 2Ds. This is a little bit complicated, but basically all of the node 2D children in the bullet need to all be offset by the same amount. 
I don't like how the system works currently. I think I'm going to have to redo it, but that's the gist of it, if that makes sense. How do I get the patterns to rotate with each other? Yeah, so this is why I offset everything. So I'm offsetting everything from its local origin by its offset along the path, basically. And that means that they all essentially share the same origin because they're all being spawned at the same spot and they're just offset. So you can imagine I'm rotating all of them individually at the same rate, but since they share the same origin, then it looks like they're all moving as one group. <laughs> Blubbers, yeah? Welcome to the stream. It's not that complicated. Code, you just got to learn it a little bit. Thanks, yeah. The problem is, though, that it becomes... Well, there's just a lot of difficulties. It's just a tricky problem to deal with, generally. Uh, like, right now, now I have to figure out how I can do this over time. Well, I think the next approach that I'm going to take is going to be doing, like, that kind of relationship. The problem is that... Um, what's the problem? The problem is that you still have all of the bullets that are individually moving, and so I don't know how you would parent them, but then also move all the bullets individually. And the reason the bullets need to be moved individually is because they're all checking collisions with the shape cast, right? And so I don't know if it's just a matter of like, there, there would be some re re-architecting that had to be done there, I think. I think. It's kind of a uh, kind of an interesting issue. But the the next question is how am I going to do this over time? I don't think I want to do it from the gun component. The problem is when I call fire, it, it reads from the bullet pattern definition components that are here. And so I need to figure out a way to make it like, oh, this is over time instead, you know? Hmm. Yeah, this is a tough one. I don't know how I'm going to accomplish this. I'm thinking of creating a uh, like a like a sort of like a mediator component which can take a reference to the gun and the bullet patterns that it wants to use and then also accept like what's the time range and all that stuff. But I'm trying to think about how that would work. Yeah. Hmm. I am stumped. I'm going to have to think about that some more. Um, let's delete that for now. Let's just see how it works right now with the boss. What am I even moving? Okay. Let's see how it works with the boss here. Spawning the skeletons with proper motion. Also, why did that take zero damage? So the living ossuary might need to move maybe a little bit faster. Or a little bit slower, I mean.
It would be a lot easier to tell what's going on if the screen didn't start going like big black rectangle there. Separate items from light layers and change some light color masks. Separate items? I mean, it shouldn't be showing a big black box regardless of if the lights are being culled or not, right? Why is there a limit, though? I thought the whole point of, like, redoing the 2D lights is that you could have as many as you wanted with no... with little overhead. I think it's a bug. I don't think this is intended behavior. I'll wait for the betas before I start messing with a bunch of light settings. Okay, it is a bug. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'll just wait for it to be fixed. I don't I don't want to mess with all my light culling settings and then redo them. Kind of annoying having to deal with all the issues, but that's what happens when you use betas, right? So I wonder if I should give the boss... Another attack. One thing that I do need to do is I need to make... Um, I need to make the boss, well, probably spawn skeletons a little bit quicker, but then also have a, a max amount of skeletons. So let's do that really quick. So my living ossuary skeleton summon timer, let's turn it down. Whoops, not 22, just two. Let's uh, keep track of the number of skeletons. So private int current skeletons, skeleton count. Let's say max skeletons is five. Nope, five. Increase the current skeleton count. We're gonna connect to the died signal. On skeleton died. Skeleton died. And then in here, current skeleton count. Decrement that. We also need to kill all the skeletons when the boss dies. So I will get that started as well. But first, if bullet circ, if skeleton, so we want to. We want to favor the summon skeleton instead of the bullet circle. And current skeleton count is less than max skeletons. Okay, that takes care of that. Uh, we want to kill all of the skeletons on death. So health component dot connect. Well, actually, I can just do health component dot died plus equal on died. And I'm just going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to add these skeletons to a group. So entity dot add to group. Let's just do name of. Well, let's just do this. Private const string skeleton group equals living ossuary skeleton. And then we'll go ahead and add that to the group. So Okay, and then when the boss dies, what we're going to do is we're going to say for each var skeleton in get tree dot get nodes in group skeleton 
uh, skeleton group in here. Skeleton dot get first note of type health component dot damage. And then we're going to say 99999 and then uh, suppress that damage float. And I think that pretty much does it. So let's go ahead and see if that indeed does work. Okay, so we've got two skeletons, we've got three skeletons, four skeletons, five skeletons, is it gonna summon any more? It is not. And so now I can kill the individual skeletons. This is actually pretty cool now. I'm liking this, yeah. I think I need to slightly change the skeleton behavior, make it a little bit more erratic, but I think that that is... I think that's good. Maybe make them stop for a, a lesser amount of time. But I want to kill them all and see if that destroys all the skeletons. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Alright, so those things are taken care of. Um, yeah, let's make the skeletons... Oh, I need to determine a spawn position for them as well. Maybe we will do that. So, let's turn down the wait time for these skeletons, though. So, pre-attack timer, we're going to turn it down to half a second. I'm going to turn off the debug mode on that aim component so there's no red dots anymore. Let's create a... So the, the tricky part about determining the spawn position is that you could spawn them in a terrain, right? So um, let's create a method here. Private void get... Maybe I should make uh, a utility method here. So game utils. I think there's like a terrain collision, right? I have some utils in here, I think. Get facing. Am I using this anywhere? I am, okay. There's somewhere in my code where I am, or I have a method for colliding. Oh, raycast terrain here. Um, all right, let's just create it here. Public, static. Um, actually, do I want to do this? Yeah, let's do this. So let's say public static vector two, get random position in radius. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say node 2d node well actually let's do this we'll pass in the direct space state space state and we're going to need the vector 2 origin and then the float radius and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, let's first grab the the target position. So var target position is equal to. And let's pass another one. Float terrain offset. Ah, too many, too many parameters. Anyway, target position is equal to origin plus uh, vector two dot right dot rotated degrees math util dot rng randf range zero to 360 and then we're going to take this 
and multiply that by Matthew till dot RNG dot randf range zero and radius. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this space state dot raycast and we're gonna raycast but new physics raycast query. Ray query parameters 2D. Oh boy. Now I don't know what these parameters are. Let's figure out where else I'm using this. Actually, I can just do this. I can say... Node.raycast terrain. Does this need to be a... Hold on, I gotta see what this does. Yeah, this doesn't need to be a node 2D. Raycast terrain from the origin to the... Uh, oh man. Sorry, I'm just creating a new, a new, uh, method for raycast terrain that takes an origin and a target rather than a direction and a length. And then what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to say return raycast terrain from uh, uh, node.raycast terrain from origin to direction times length. So I've got both ways of doing it now. And then I can say raycast terrain origin to target position. How do you get a navigation agent and tile map navigation to work with each other? Um, Good question. I don't really know how to do it in Godot 4. In Godot 3, you would just define your navigation polygon, and then that's basically it. Then you can just call, you can use the navigation server, the pathfind node, or the navigation agent 2D node to get paths. Um, but what I'm doing is it's very, my, my levels are very simple and I didn't want to deal with tile map uh, didn't want to deal with tile map navigation so I just defined navigation polygons myself so I've got all these navigation polygons here which are just basically really simple shapes and as long as you've defined the navigation regions here uh, they will automatically be used by the navigation agents well, depending on how you've configured your navigation layers in, in here you're welcome you are welcome, Jack. Okay, so var result is equal to that. Okay, if result not equal to null, return, uh, let's say var position is equal to result dot position, and then if well, we'll do this position. We could just do this return result position plus result dot normal times the terrain offset. Okay, and then else we'll just return the uh, target position. Okay, and now the living ossuary, I should be able to do this. Global position equal to game utils dot get random position in radius. This global position 
and we'll just call this private const float skeleton spawn radius is equal to 96. Okay, and now we should have skeletons spawning in that radius around, oh dang it, that radius around the living ossuary. I don't know why it says it's doing zero damage when the skeletons spawn. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Oh, perhaps because they're being healed. Ah, I know why. Because they're being healed to full when they spawn, and that is being listened to if Well, let's just do this. Oh, health update. Cool. All right. Hey, the ducks dev, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Okay, I think that's working. It's they still seem to be spawning very close to the to the living ossuary. <laughs> I'm going to change the spawn radius to something bigger like 256. Hey, light, let's see. Couldn't find anything online so I was wondering if you knew how to set the children of a node as an array of nodes. Set the children of a node as an array of nodes. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Oh, get? Get the children of a node? Or are you saying like set, set the children from an array? Oh, dang it, he spawned inside the terrain. No. Oh, because I didn't supply an offset. I That's why I included the offset. Okay. That's why I included the offset. Like, if you have a node, can you just have an array of nodes and just put them on a node as children? I think you'd have to just iterate over each each element in the array and add it individually as a child. If you're using C-sharp, you can create an extension method to do that. But I think, yeah, I don't think there's a way to just pass in an array and like set it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything built in like that. It would be nice, I think, if there was. Okay, I think that's working. Yeah. Cool. Haha, <laughs> skeletons. Yeah, this is actually going to be... I can see this being pretty difficult. Like, I'm, I'm already getting hit a couple times. And I'm in god mode. Ooh. Yeah. That might be pretty difficult. I'm probably going to add another attack to that living ossuary as well, or maybe make the skeleton attacks a little bit more difficult, but that's basically the gist of that fight. So let's see. Enhancements to skeleton spawning.
Okay. Seeing live develop... Uh, uh, so you want to move children of an object? Yeah, that's right. Did, I, did you turn off vi viewport pixelation? I did not. No, it's still there. Oh, viewport... Yeah, it's still there in the game. Should be. Yeah. Bone Maelstrom Tornado goes brr. <laughs> Seeing live development like this is super useful. Understanding the thought process that goes into it. I'm glad you're finding it useful, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. You can just reparent the children, yeah. Yeah, version control is really good. Even if you're never going to share the code with anyone, so many times, like first of all, I have the confidence of being able to go back. So I will be an A sprite a lot of times, right? And I'll just be like in here and I'll do something really cool, right? Be like, yeah, I really like that, but I want to tweak it a little bit. I want to make some changes. So instead of being like paranoid or creating duplicates, I'll just save it, go to my version control, stage it so that I have that version just kind of like saved locally. And then I'll make whatever changes I want like this. And then I can say, actually, I don't like that. So I'm just going to close that and I'm going to revert this change. And then I'm going to go back in. And now I'm back to that first change that I that I had, right? So it's like keeping your own undo history, basically. And then being able to go back in time and pull and resurrect old pieces of code is really nice as well. So if even if you're working by yourself, like version control is very, very valuable. Okay. Well, I think that's it for me. It's dinner time, so I'm going to go I'm going to go eat something. But that's basically the gist of the fight. It's basically done. I'm going to do some enhancements to it, I think, but that is uh that's that's it. Let me go play it one more time. It is a lifesaver, yeah, for sure. So yeah, we got skeleton spawning. You can't damage the living ossuary, the boss, the bone maelstrom. Uh directly, you have to shoot the skeletons to damage the boss. And so you've got a lot sort of going on on the screen, but that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's the fight. That's the gist of it. And that'll be it for the stream tonight. Thank you, everyone, for watching and participating. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have some exciting news about Gun Game in the very near future. So be sure to, well, everyone in chat is subscribed. But if you're watching right now, be sure to subscribe if you're not. And... Yeah, everyone have a good day, evening, and I'll, uh, yeah, you're welcome. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.